This is Life Rewired, the Brain Injury Podcast, for survivors, by survivors. And now your host, Rob and Ashley. Um, I don't know what it's like to live every day, knowing that yesterday I did all that and it was fine. And today, for the love of Pete, I cannot remember why it's not working. <laughs> Um, and she'll say that mom, I have no idea. And I'm like, cool. Let, you know, um, but really for me, it's a conscious and I don't mean conscious, like I have to work at it, but I do have to really think, yep, this isn't intentional because, you know, we're yeah. all humans and we all have feelers involved and, you know, um, and obviously I don't comprehend what it's like to be her. You yeah. know, and on the flip side, she doesn't comprehend what it's like to be me. And so we just have really open conversations about that. And we're just really that. honest with each other. Like, this is what it looks like to me. Tell me what it looks like to you. And sometimes she'll come to me and be like, mom, I don't know why you said that. It doesn't make sense to me. And I'll be like, okay, <laughs> my bad. Like, let's talk. And I think that that's really <laughs> been huge for us is just trying really hard Communicating. to through it and be open. Yeah. And you've probably figured out shortcuts to help her out. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know, for example, my wife, mm -hmm. and I didn't even consciously realize this. Um, there was times that I would go to the store. Well, this I can't remember when this happened, but I came home. She had made me a list of things to buy. Mm -hmm. And she had numbered them. You know, one uh, milk, two <laughs> eggs. So when I came home with one thing of milk, two cartons of <laughs> eggs, three things of, it didn't dawn on me that, you know, that's what she was doing. So yesterday she had mm -hmm. sent me to the store. She knew I was going. So she wrote me a list. Mm -hmm. And as I'm in the store, I looked at the list and she did A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And you went, she's smart. Mm-hmm. Cause she didn't want to get home. She wanted me to go come home with like, you know, a hundred mm -hmm. of one item. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so yeah. So you've probably figured out things along the way that you can do to make her life simple without even her, even knowing probably. Um, so some of it, she, I don't know if some of it she does or doesn't know, but a lot of it we talk about and we talk about why I do that. Because in my mind at some point she is, she has a dream. This kid wants to be a forensic pathologist. Like that is her goal. And, wow. um, I, love that. I, and that's going to require her going away to college. You know, it's a kind of a requirement for that job. So we talk about why I set things up the way I do or why she needs them set up a certain way. Um, and that's a conversation we started probably about maybe two to three years ago, probably when she was around 14 or 15, because I know at some point she's going to live out of my house and she'll be very successful. Don't get me wrong. I know she'll figure it out, but I always also want her to know that we can talk about how she sets herself up. But I think in the beginning, when we were all just trying to um, put together what would be a great plan for her at school when she was 13. Yeah. So she actually got diagnosed December of 2019 and we all know what happened in March of 2020. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So for her, we would had the diagnosis roughly two months because there was the Christmas break in there. So mm -hmm. roughly two months at school. So we were still trying to figure that piece out. And then all of a sudden everything changed and we were at home. And, and that was a huge curve for her because she doesn't do online stuff because that involved a lot of sequencing. You have to click to this site, to this site, to this link on the site, over here, over here. And then there's your homework. She yeah. could not follow it. And so we had to then come up with a whole new game plan, Gosh. you know, at the end of 2020 school year. And then all of 2021, we were at home. So, um, those were moments that I took to say, what works for you? You need to help figure this out. Cause I'm not, I'm not the person who's going to do your stuff for you. I'm definitely a, you need to participate in figuring this out. I'm yes. huge on personal accountability. And again, I've been criticized for my parenting for that. Like I've absolutely been criticized by the school. Oh, she has a disability. You can't expect her to do that. And I'm like, Oh yes, I can. Like, you know, and then there's moments where she's like, mom, I'm really not getting it. And then I say, okay. And let's step back. Um, and that took a lot for me to learn too. Um, but those little tactics and those little things, um, for a little bit, I probably did them, but very quickly I realized she needed to be part of that. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was, you know, there's definitely been some rough moments in trying, 
<laughs> trying to figure out what works for her, what doesn't work for her, what my ideas work and what don't work. And there's definitely been moments, but um, she's going into her senior year in August. And so she's definitely um, put together some stuff for herself. But if I go ask her to go somewhere, the directions have to be written still mm. because mm -hmm. she won't remember how many steps there are. Um, things like that, just things that she'll yeah. have to do for herself too. That's but that's awesome. funny, by the way, that you bring home three eggs and four. I'm laughing. I, I had to <laughs> laugh because my kid's done that. <laughs> We've absolutely done that. <laughs> you know, you put a list out, one, two, three, four, five, and then you come home with like six of this or seven of that. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> ABC, you know yep. now. <laughs> things we learn, right? Things we learn right. as we're moving through it. <laughs> Yeah, you have to figure out what works. <laughs> right. And caregivers have to learn just the same. Yeah. Maybe it's not. It's a learning curve but... for both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why I was <laughs> laughing because I was like, oh, she did that. <laughs> it's fun. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ashley, I think you're on mute. You're muted. The grocery store is still a big trigger for me. So it's like, for me, like, I need to get out of there as fast as I can. So like, anytime I'm with my husband, like, he'll want to take his time and make sure he got everything and double check. And I'm just like, ready to like, I got what I need. I need to get out of here. I'm too overwhelmed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Crowds are definitely... Yeah, high school is difficult. Well, the <laughs> lighting and then the aisles and I don't know. It's just a lot. It's funny because people don't think about stuff like that. The sensory piece mm -hmm. of the TBI, right? Because right. the light, exactly the light, the noise, the, I mean, yeah. people, hers is touch. Mm -hmm. She, okay. like if somebody, it's a very, she describes it very differently than most people. She doesn't particularly care for mm -hmm. touch mm -hmm. um, because the sensation is very different for her. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in school you're getting going through hallways or even at the grocery store, right? You bump into people, people yeah. brush you. And she's like, Ugh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's like um, <laughs> they touched me today. <laughs> so, but yeah, all that yeah, stuff. I can relate to that. I can, the more people, the worse it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's true for a lot of people. Yeah. I wish stores would have like sensory hours for people with disabilities. It would be handy. Yeah. I know like some grocery stores around here have like hours for like elderly people or stuff like that. But it's like, I can't show off at those hours because they'll be like, you're not like 80 years old. <laughs> They're like, you can't come in. <laughs> but I eternally feel like an 80 year old. Please. Can, I get my right? <laughs> can we no, negotiate actually, please? <laughs> you have, you have the theater behind you. You can act like an 80 year old when I get you a wig. Oh, <laughs> There you go. I see you can make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, hmm. Yeah. I do think from a caregiver perspective, though, that maybe um, not understanding how all that stimulus affects them. I mean, and you can describe it the best that you can, right? Like my daughter tries to describe things and sometimes I'm like, I don't get it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but I try really hard to be like, okay, I hear what you're saying. Let's see what we can do. Even though I literally have zero comprehension on an experiential level, what she's talking about. Um, yeah. but acknowledging that too, mm -hmm. it may not understand, but let's, let's try and work around it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, and I guess the general population has no idea, you no, know, zero don't. comprehension, like, Ashley, what you're saying, just the sounds and the lights and the, you know, they don't comprehend why it's different for you. No. Um, I wish there was like a way to do like one of those things where like, I don't know, you could ha like put goggles on somebody that like, you know, they don't want to look at the goggles and then like uh -huh. a noise that's really loud and just walk them through this like dark maze for them to like experience what we deal with like you know, some type of pressure thing that gives you a bad headache. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Like they did that for like, you know, so guys could understand what it like for a woman to like mm -hmm. give birth or have menstrual cramps. Yes. They have yeah. that device for them. And you see the videos of them be like, Oh, oh, oh. Like, yeah. I wish they had videos for like, you know, 
what yeah. we go through. Well, and they have the like uh, the the drunk driving goggles, right? Yeah. And you try oh, and walk. Really? Yeah, yeah. They've had those yeah. for a long time. You put them on, wow. and it's like your perceptions mm-hmm. off. Your walking's wobbly. Yeah. So that's a great idea, actually. Um, I never thought of that, but that's a great idea because it is. Hey, just- let's patent that. <laughs> there you go. See. <laughs> then we'll start a, a big uh, caregiver caregiver slash TBI slash mm-hmm. whatever foundation. Yeah. I think it's so super important for caregivers to know that they don't really know. We don't know, you know, we yeah. live with, we live with it. We kind of have that exterior external input or observations, but we still really don't know yeah. what it's like to be um, somebody who has a injury or a TBI. You know, we just don't. Um, and I think that's hard sometimes for caregivers because they're there all the time, right? They're the ones that are problem solving or, or taking care of 24 seven, depending on how severe the TBI really is. Um, and I think sometimes, you know, they're like, Oh, we know. And you know, this part, but you don't know that internal piece. You yeah. just can't. And you're constantly thinking for two people. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my case four, cause there's four of us in my family. So I have to negotiate the other ones too. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'll need to stop. Cause this is really what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you're so. constantly going back and forth then <laughs> yeah yeah i also think i also i didn't think about really that piece of it but really you kind of end up being a mediator too yeah so which is what it's it one is. thing that's frustrating for my wife is that she doesn't she doesn't i don't want to say she gets mad but she gets irritated that people that's even in our close circle mm-hmm. that they just they appear that they don't even want to know what a brain injury is, you know? Yes. Mm-hmm. We have and family members that, that way too often. Yep. We have family members that treat her differently now that they know. I'm like, yeah. she's still her. She's still her person. She's still the same person. Yeah. You know, you went 13 years before you knew, <laughs> like, <laughs> but yeah, it's interesting. Like I said, maybe that, I don't know if it's judgment or fear or, I don't know what causes that, but it is hard. Yeah, and I think a lot of it's education because it's it all boils down to people judging books by the cover. Mm-hmm. Yep. <clears throat> you know, that's the biggest complaint every brain injury survivor will tell you is mm-hmm. that they get so tired of hearing, well, you look fine. Oh, my gosh, yes. Yeah, we hear that I, all the time. I all don't time. know that there's ever going to be a way to ever get past that. Yeah, because what do they call it? The invisible disability, right? Yeah, yeah. invisible injury. Yeah, and it's it is true because somebody who has an amputation, right? You visually mm-hmm. can see something is different. Yeah, somebody with a brain injury, you cannot visually see something is different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we get that all so the true. time. But you don't look like something's wrong with you. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, do we have to look like something's wrong? Like, <laughs> apparently. Now, uh, yeah, mm. yeah. On my very bad days, you can definitely tell there's something wrong with me because I can't hardly get a sentence out. Yes. We have those days here too. Yeah. So, so. yeah, you get it then. Yeah. Yeah. And hers is um, not maybe as much as the verbal speech, but her like literally walking. Like she, some days she just cannot coordinate enough to walk well. Mm-hmm. Um, like she will literally, like we kind of joke about it. She'll joke about it. So I'll say it, but she will literally walk into the wall, like the side of the wall because Mm -hmm. she doesn't gauge where it's at. And we're like, Oh, you're having a bad day. She's like, I guess, you know, she'll laugh and keep going. But when she was littler and I didn't know, this is where I'm a terrible mom. I'd be like, Tasha, that's her name. There's a wall. Did you not see the wall? Like, cause it baffled me that she would walk into the end of the wall. I'm like, well, now I know why. So now she makes fun of me. She's like, mom, if you did just known, <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, at least she has a great sense of humor, but yeah, you know, during the true. whole process of not knowing, um, mm-hmm. things like she would be walking and literally just like stumble and fall over. And we're like, first of all, are you okay? Secondly, what in the world is happening? You know? Um, but that goes back to that piece where you just keep advocating because something's obviously not right. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's hard to, to it's hard to describe really what goes on up here because mm-hmm. there's times that I've actually caught myself going 
in my brain, not verbally, but in my brain, I'll be going, okay, that foot goes next. That could, you know, I'm walking myself through walking. Yep. I'm like, who does that? You know, my kid. <laughs> yeah. And there's been times that I'll, I'm sitting there with a bunch of food in my mouth and she'll say, are you okay? Oh, I'm got to swallow this. Yep. You know, duh. <laughs> but I mean, it happens. It happens to us all. Right. And again, that goes back to just the neurotransmitters are getting stuck somewhere. They're just not connecting and, and people don't realize that that actually happens. Um, yeah. So, which is why, by the way, I find it really odd that this kid can skate because she can't walk on land. <laughs> She's a terrible walker. She's an okay skater. <laughs> it's funny. She always jokes about that. <laughs> she thinks it's funny. Um, but then there's the other piece of stuff like that, that people don't realize, like, I don't know if you guys experience this, but she has like sometimes breathing issues, right? Because her, the lobe in her brain is not the vital organ center, but it is the cerebellum that causes your muscles to work. Is that where so, you forget to breathe? Um, she won't be able to like catch her breath sometimes. And it's because her lungs don't expand because the muscles aren't, the muscles aren't talking. Gotcha. Um, so people don't realize like there's, there's other things that come with it. She doesn't uh, temperature regulate well, like because her neurotransmitters don't mm -hmm. connect to the right spots. So it's not just, um, it's not just things like walking or not sequencing. There's actual like normal body functions for her that are different than yeah. everybody else. And I'm not sure if you guys have that either, but I do know that she does and people don't, People don't comprehend when she's, you know, in the middle of summer and it's 80 degrees and she's got three sweatshirts on because she's cold because <laughs> her body's not regulating, <laughs> you know. People, I'm usually hot. Yeah. Of course, I have a lot more insulation. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. No, but people just look at her like, what is wrong with you? You know, and yeah. she's like, I'm cold. So there's a lot of gamuts, right? Your brain does everything. It touches every part of your body, right? And it manages and controls every part of your body, everything. Right. And so certain things on certain days are just mm -hmm. different. The only thing I've had with the, with that issue is sometimes I get so busy mm -hmm. and I'm concentrating on what I'm doing and I'll forget to breathe. Mm. And all of a sudden I'm going, <gasps> mm -hmm. I, I forgot to breathe. Like yeah. who forgets to breathe? Well, it happens. <laughs> right. Because the yeah. track, the neurotransmitter mm -hmm. track has a bump in it and that's why. Yeah. <laughs> I got sidetracked. <laughs> yep. The joke in our house is when someone will say, can he multitask? And she'll always say he can't single task, <laughs> which is true. <laughs> I'm not. That's funny because I get it. Yeah. Oh, you knew, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I get the exterior piece of going, um, did this get done? And she'll be like, Oh, <laughs> so, or my wife will say, you wrote it down. Mm. Yeah doesn't mean that it's going to happen. <laughs> that also the means intentions I, there, but it doesn't mean it's going to happen. And maybe I left the piece of paper over here and I went over here. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. If we it's not up. physically with me, it is not going to happen. Yeah. We find pieces of paper every once in a while. And I'm like, Oh, she meant to do that. <laughs> and then she'll or be like, Oh, well, that's where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll carry myself around. I'll go, have you seen my phone? Mm -hmm. What's in your hand? My phone. Mm hmm. Oh, I'm looking for my phone. That's yeah. right. We have a lot You've of humor. That? Yeah, I've done that, but yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of humor in our house because sometimes it's just like, you know, she's or doing the best she do. can. We're doing the best we can. And sometimes things are just funny. Yeah. <laughs> like, True. oh, you really forgot that? <laughs> so, or really, that's what you thought? You know, just we have a lot of humor in our house because. There's just things you have that, to. You either, yeah. I told my wife today, you know, you could laugh or you can cry. Yeah. Yep. Laughing's a lot more better. <laughs> a lot more better. Yeah. Don't you love my English? A lot more better. A lot, I more, a lot better. more better. I always That's use the country negatives. coming out. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Um, I actually hadn't really thought about it until you said that, the laughter and the crying thing. But like when she cries, like if she actually, because she's not a big crier, like she's kind of a person who just lets things roll off her back and she's like, okay. Because um, she's got her, she's got her focuses in life, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. she doesn't usually get involved in yeah. a lot of the other stuff or high school drama. Thankfully, yeah. she stays out of that. But when she cries, yeah. like she usually cries pretty hard, mm -hmm. but then she'll sleep. Like mm -hmm. she will sleep for 
12 hours, like wow. done. Wow. And I think it's just so exhausting yeah. is my personal is. opinion mm -hmm. that she just can't recoup. And so when she has a big, huge cry, she's usually asleep within 15 minutes and then it's done for the night. Yeah. Yeah, I get that it. That happened? Okay. I wasn't mm -hmm. sure like how normal that was because I haven't really Not asked. Not for 12 it. hours, but you know. She's done. But yeah. Knocks you out. Yeah. Yeah. But I also think like she's, I mean, her schedule is so, so packed and busy with her school and her figure skating and stuff. I think that finally when she shuts down, it's done. <laughs> like yeah. I think mm -hmm. that's why she sleeps so long. Yep. She's spent a week, week full of spoons. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe that's just my assumption. Yeah. So. That sounds like that's probably what's going on. Yeah. But it's, it's interesting. So. Well, I'll hand it over to Ashley so you can send us home, Ashley. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. I'm Ashley. And I'm Rob. And this is Life Rewired.